For an update on regulatory developments in Latin America, we zap to Zapopane in Mexico and connect with Nidia Calvo Mendes from HP Inc. Hi Nidia, at HP you are responsible for the Americas region. An extensive region you nicely described as from the polar bears in the north to the penguins in the south. Let's focus on the middle and southern part. What were the most notable regulatory developments in Latin America in 2022? So nice to talk to you and my Chemcom family. You know, this past 2022 was definitely a busier year for Latin America, at least busier than the previous ones. While some countries had their governments restructured due to elections, some others worked uh, very hardly on solidified their chemical management policies, and others even worked on the fundamentals for a chemical policy or extended producer re regulations, extended producer responsibility regulations, and implemented a few of them. Is this the case for Chile and Colombia? Exactly. Those are the countries that I had in mind. Those are the countries that, amongst others, have been very, very active. While Chile and Colombia are the only countries in Latin America that have established a chemical policy management in, or inventory, other countries in Latin America, including Brazil and Argentina, are in the process of drafting chemical frameworks. Chile and Colombia published their chemical management regulations in 2021, but it has been during 2022 that they both have defined different and important paths for the manufacturers or importers that they need to follow in order to comply with the legal requirements from their GHS implementation and the creation of a chemical inventory of chemicals entering the different markets in these countries. Can you tell us more about this important path through the Latin America legislation jungle and provide some examples of what needs to be done and the expected benefits? Sure. As an example, Colombia's chemical policy is a several step process where the first uh, actions are intended to create a chemical inventory of those chemicals or those substances entering the market. In the last steps, this process will be focused on prioritization of hazardous substances and their subsequent risk assessment and risk management. Colombia recently published or recently launched its online reg registration system. This was in June 2022. And this system is intended to ask the companies to register their substances, very basic information of their substances, for all those industrial chemicals above uh, 100 kilograms per, per year that are entering the, the, the market. And this will, be, uh, this will have a deadline by May 2025. After that initial uh, creation of the inventory, the Colombian authorities will have to work on defining the framework to run risk assessment and risk management uh, paths on the registered substance and then defining the adequate risk management actions that they will take over. On the other hand, Chile also has started the creation and implementation of their chemical regulatory policy with the Decree 57. This decree is aligned with the GHS version 7, the, the purple book, the GHS version 7, and its implementation will uh, is looking for the regulation, the, the classification, labeling, and uh, classification of hazardous substances. This uh, process also requires a notification and the government in Chile is asking for a first step where they are asking for the classification of the hazardous substances. The official list of substances was released in, April, in August 2021 and it's intended to give the manufacturers in Chile and importers the basic information of substances that they will use as a reference to classify their own substances entering the market. It applies to manufacturers and importers of those substances in, intended to be uh, imp imported, sorry, imported into Chile in a volume above a thousand kilograms per year. Yeah, that's a ton of per, per year. Any news on the regulatory developments in 2022 in Mexico? Or was there a Mexican standoff? Yeah. Well, I think that saying there was a Mexican standoff is the best way of explaining what really happened. Although we have seen isolated actions on uh, maybe some regulation, regulation of substances in, in the country or updating the non-mandatory inventory of chemicals, there really hasn't been a, a real advance. And Mexico has stayed way behind on the chemical race in Latin America. Uh, the most recent action that I can think of is the work that the Ministry of Transportation has done to update the documents to transport dangerous goods and some other similar updates on standards relating the, the shipping, labeling and uh, handling of, of dangerous goods in Mexico. It looks like 2022 was a bit tranquilo. 
What can we expect for Latin America in 2023? Yeah, a little bit tranquilo for Mexico, definitely. And well, in 2023, I believe we can expect uh, more countries to join the trend on drafting their chemical policies. And definitely there will be more work, a lot of work in uh, on extended producer responsibility regulations, which will impact products sold in the markets and definitely waste and hazardous substances management and disposals are topics that are common between the countries in these regions. Can we expect something special happening in Brazil? In Brazil, yeah, definitely we should expect that Brazil will bring back the conversation on their chemical management regulation in 2023. And even before that, there are some conversations around developing a tool to monitor the stocks of hazardous chemicals in the country as part of its efforts to establish a chemical inventory. So I definitely believe Brazil will, will be uh, or will have an important role on the chemical policy management in the region in the coming years. I also believe that Argentina will come back to the conversation of chemical management in their country as they have been really active or they have been working really hard on the draft chemical law and have also been actively participating in different activities organized by the Latin American Regulatory Cooperation Forum. Actually, this brings back to my memory that uh, the Latin American Regulatory Cooperation Forum has been very active in the past years and they have been uh, very interested in planning a roadmap, uh, defining different documents and uh, they have actually released a few documents that are very, very interesting to read and uh, for plans in the forthcoming years. In April 2022, the Latin American Regulatory Cooperation Forum prepared a report along with the International Chemical, the International Council of Chemical Associations, the ICCA. And this report urges Latin America uh, authorities or governments to develop inventories that prioritize the exchange of data, pointing out uh, the so-called mutual acceptance schemes, which basically accepts some information provided from one inventory of another, to another country. They can share that. In September 2020, the working group published a roadmap for sound management of industrial chemicals, while right now the same group is in the process of developing guidelines on risk prioritization and assessment methodologies. Interesting, right? Absolutely. We are already looking forward to the update of the forum in San Francisco during the special Latin America seminar at Chemical in the Americas 2023 in March. Final question for you. What are the most important regulatory challenges for your electronics industry around the globe that are key to focus on now and in 2023? Well, in general, for the electronics industry, I can foresee definitely a more stringent scenario related to specific chemicals such as PFAS, flame retardants, microplastics, PFOS, you know, POPs, etc. You know, um, PFAS right now is a burning topic in the US. So uh, with the state and federal regulations, I really believe that it will rapidly ramp, ramp up to other countries and regions and we will face reporting, uh, maybe banning, maybe some, uh, I don't know, restrictions of the products containing uh, these substances in the future. On the other hand, EPR regulations are emerging in different countries and um, highlighting the importance of a waste, chemical management, sound management of, of uh, hazardous substances. And this will also bring a more challenging scenario for all the product manufacturers and importers. The combination of GHS implementation, EPR regulations and restriction or regulations uh, and disclosure of specific hazardous substances will definitely pose a more stringent structure of compliance worldwide. Nidia, muchas gracias for your valuable contribution. Looking forward to seeing you in 2023.